Alright, so at this point you've now seen some of the uh, shortcut rules for finding derivatives, which is going to make life a lot easier, uh, at least when it comes to finding derivatives. So uh, here we've just got three examples, and I'm just going to find the derivative of each one of these. So the first one's quite easy. Um, so we've got f of x equals x to the tenth. So the derivative rule says that whenever you have a variable to a power, we just pull that number out front, so the 10 is going to come right out front, and then we simply subtract 1 from our exponent, so we would have 10 minus 1, or 9, and that's our derivative. It says, hey, the derivative is just going to be 10 times x to the ninth. So, uh, you know, if you tried to use that long definition, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, it would take you quite a bit of work to get there, so kind of nice how, how quick and easy we can get this solution. Um, let's look at our next one here, g of x uh, equals x to the 5 halves plus 3x plus 4. Well, okay, uh, we'll do the same thing here. Okay, so the 5 over 2, that's going to come out front. Um, let's write this a little better. So our 5 over 2 is going to come right out front. Okay, then we have to subtract 1, so maybe I'll write that. So we have to do 5 over 2 minus 1, that's going to be our new exponent. Plus, well, to kind of be uh, really uh, clear here, when you're multiplying by a constant, nothing really happens to the constant. We can just take the derivative of the, sort of the variable part. So the 1 would come out front, um, and then we would subtract 1 from the exponent, and that would give us 0. Okay, so we'll come back to this in just a second. The derivative of a constant is just 0, so the plus 4, normally we don't write plus 0, but I'll write it here just to be, you know, kind of hopefully clear about what's going on. All right, well, so we've got 5 over 2 times x to the 5 halves. Well, we would have to get common denominators, so instead of minus 1, we could write that as 2 over 2. Well, 5 minus 2 will give us 3 over 2. Um, when we take a, a, a number and raise it to the 0 power, um, we're going to get just 1. So we, we can just write 3 times x to the 0 is 3 times 1. Again, the plus 0 will leave it off. So it says our derivative is going to be 5, half, uh, 5 halves times x raised to the 3 over 2 plus 3. So what happens is, again, you know, the 5 over 2 just comes out front like normal. Uh, you know, hey, it's a fraction, but if you subtract 1, you're just subtracting 2 over 2 in this case, which gives us 3 halves. When you have a number times a variable to the first, basically the variable just goes away when you take the derivative. And then the constant just goes to 0. So that would be our derivative uh, for part b. And last but not least, uh, let's look at our last one here. So we've got... Um, so we had h of x equals 1 over the cubed root of x. And uh, maybe just to remind you, remember the, uh, so if we have x raised to the m and then the nth root of that, we can write that as x raised to the m over n. So you can think about this as being x to the first power underneath. So we could really rewrite this as 1 over x raised to the 1 third power. Well, to use that derivative rule, we need sort of the x to be in the numerator. Well, I can pull the x upstairs, and I just have to change the sign on the exponent. So really, h of x, I can rewrite that as just uh, saying it's x to the negative one-third. And now I'm in a good spot where I can take the derivative. So the negative one-third comes right out front. And then we would have negative one-third, and we would subtract one. But I can write one as three over three to get common denominators. So we would have negative 1 over 3x. Well, negative 1 minus 3 will give us negative 4 over 3. And this is now our derivative. It says it would be negative 1 third x to the negative 4 thirds. Um, we could rewrite this as negative 1 over 3x to the positive 4 thirds. And if we wanted to, we could even put this back in our radical notation. So kind of uh, using this little rule up here. So it says whatever's in the denominator, that's what the root is. So here we would be taking still um, a cubed root, but now instead of just having x to the first, we would have x to the fourth power. So that's how we could sort of rewrite it all. Um, 
again using radical notation. So, all right, um, again, just kind of some basic rules here. You'll use these all the time in calculus. Um, certainly will be some other rules coming along as well. But again, um, certainly I think uh, once you've done a few of these using the definition, uh, life seems much easier now. So, um, But again, now the fun part is they're going to give you really complicated functions to take the derivative of. So it'll, it can still be a little tricky, but certainly these shortcuts uh, do make life a lot easier when taking derivatives.